Hello everyone, in this video we'll learn how to create a bootable Linux ISO image but apart from that we would also learn how to alter the init RAM effects which is the essential part of whatever Linux distribution. So just a few words on what in particular is actually available under the given ISO no matter what kind of distribution you're downloading from internet let's say. So uh, there are three major parts. The first is the bootloader the program that actually allows you to like start your computer and tell it like what operating system to boot then it has the Linux kernel the part that talks to your hardware mostly and is responsible for like, creating processes within the operating system etc like doing some system calls and finally last but not least is the root file system and nowadays so-called any RAMFS is used for that sort of a purpose, which has an extension of cpio.gz usually. I'm going to be using TinyCore Linux uh, as the Linux distribution, and the problem with that is that it uses the syslinux bootloader and not the grub. And the problem with the syslinux is that on my current laptop, the one I bought a couple of days ago, it simply doesn't work. So uh, I need to provide a custom bootloader. I'm going to be using Grub. So it might happen that the existing bootloader for your favorite Linux distribution doesn't simply uh, be comfortable with the hardware you're running this on. So that's one of the reasons. And another reason is obviously I want to slightly change the init RAMFS so that I could add some static binary executables to the init RAMFS so that I could uh, run it on the rescue system that I'm supposed to be building. But uh, before that, let's actually uh, start by uh, creating a shell script that would be building this ISO uh, block by block. Then we'll run it and then I'll show you how to alter the any RAM effect. So without further ado, let's actually get started. Okay, so I want to create a new directory called Linux and cd into that directory and here i want to create a file called build.shell so here we start with uh cleaning up things so clean up and i want to remove uh recursively and force the removal of the folders iso and root so these are the folders we're supposed to be updating and i want to clean them up every next iteration. The next thing to do, we want to download the kernel, um, the root file system and a text editor. So I'm going to be uh, embedding the text editor that you currently can see on your screen, which is called Bitchy, the one I've written in my very own. Uh, it's based on GNU EZ command language and I've added the visual interface to it just like uh, in BIM so so since uh, we're gonna be right uh, since we're gonna be running this script uh, many times uh, during this video I don't I do not want to uh, download uh, to happen every time so I can say if not test minus e and I'm uh, looking for the file called VM Linus 64 which is the linux kernel so if it doesn't exist then uh i do the download if it does exist i do not do any download so here i can say widget uh and i'm downloading from tiny linux uh version 13 64 bit release distribution files vm linux right so yang paste and also the file system uh, rootfs is called copure64.gz right uh, now I want also I also want to fetch the text editor so I can say git clone https github.com and my username and editor is called vichy so now let's uh, make this script executable and this is build shell and let's run and run it. So it downloads the Linux kernel, it downloads the root file system and it downloads the text editor. Yeah, fantastic. Okay.
Okay, so he run the files, and if I run the build again, it does nothing because the files are already being downloaded. So um, let's get back to the file, and here. Uh, the next thing to do, I want to create the ISO folder. Okay, so simply say mkd and create the parent directories, and I want to have the ISO and the boot under it, and the grub under the boot. Okay, and then I want to install Linux kernel. Um, and I can say cp and vm linux 64 goes to iso boot vm linux 64. Right, quit. And if I build this again, we have this iso being created. So ls iso, uh, ls iso boot, and we have the Linux kernel and the grub uh, folder. So within the grub folder, we need to provide uh, the grub cfg grub config file. So let's do that as the following thing. So going back and here. So uh, this configuration uh, is supposed to be run with the UEFI, but this is also going to be working with a legacy BIOS boot. So hopefully that makes sense. So here I want to create a grub config file. Okay. And let's just make some space. So uh, I want to set default equals to zero. I want to set the timeout equals to 10 seconds. I want to insert module called EFIGOP. I also want to insert module font. And then I say if load font and the path is boot, grab fonts. This folder is going to be created, so no problem. And the font name is unicode.pf2. Okay. So then we want to insert module gfx term. Then we want to set gfx mode auto then we want to set gfx payload equals to keep and finally terminal output to gfx term like this and then we want to create a menu entry. So let's just call it Linux. And this is going to be the class OS. And here, again, we want to insert module GZIO. Want to insert module Part petition MS DOS. And now the most essential uh, parts here. So Linux means the Linux kernel. So boot and VM Linux 64 and the init RD. So although I specify init RD, essentially this is init RAMFS. So just to make sure that there is no uh, confusion here. Uh, boot and for now we use this one core pure 64 dot gz well now obviously this is not going to work like this so i can simply say so from 18 to 34 substitute the beginning of the line with the echo 
like this and also from 18 to 34 I want to substitute I'm just using the different delimiter uh, the I want to substitute the end of the line with a double quote when I pen to the file ISO uh, boot grab grab the CFG and here we go I just forgot this over in here yes I just manually add ISO boot grab uh, grab the CFG so let's now try to run this one more time and now I want to list ISO boot grab okay we get we got the file called grab CFG so let's see what is in there so cat and grab dot uh, C F G, and here is our configuration file. Great. Now the next thing to do, um, I just want to first without uh, okay. Uh, first, I just want to install um root file system so we'll get rid of this later because when it comes to actually altering the root file system uh, the place where it's supposed to be uh, copied is going to be a little bit different within the script but anyway uh, although not even different but yeah just uh, this is going to be done in a little bit different way so but for now, I can simply say cp and call pure64.gz to ISO boot and call pure64.gz. So we have specified this uh, right over in here. So this init rd call pure64.gz. When we alter this, this name uh, would be different, but yeah, for now. Uh, let's just build this one more time and now again list ISO boot and I will also have the core pure 64 GZ here so now we are ready to bundle all of these files into a single ISO so let's do that so build and here I want to say create ISO image and I am using grub uh, mk rescue and the output uh, the output file will be just linux.iso and uh, I want to make the iso file from the iso folder like this right quit and now let's build and now uh, it creates the Linux ISO file, creates it, completed successfully. So list, we have the ISO file here, Linux ISO. Now let's create another script to run our ISO file. So I say vichy and let's call it run.shell. Uh, and again, uh, this is going to be bin bash. Yeah, I probably forgot to uh, the she band uh, in the previous file, but <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm using QMU, uh, so QMU system uh, x86 underscore 64. I want to say no graphic because I'm going to be running this on the terminal. Uh, I want to use curses library so that I can see the output when it goes from uh, zero output to TTY1 um, and I say CD ROM and it's called Linux.iso and I want to give it one gig of memory right quit uh, make it executable the run shell and let's try to run Okay, yes, rendering is not perfect, but yeah, in the real hardware, this would work like a charm. That's just because of the emulator. 
So it would now start, um, yeah, you see like a, a printer that didn't uh, find the uh, UE UEFI environment, but it still works, still boots. And same with the real hardware as well. So now uh, the ISO image that we've created is uh, practically uh, particularly no different from the one that you can download from the official Tinyco Linux uh, repository. But there is one uh, issue with the official one. So the official one relies on the syslinux bootloader while um, it's not supported on some hardware. And that's the well-known issue. Uh, and let's say on my laptop that I, that I bought a couple of days ago, uh, my favorite tiny call Linux simply doesn't work because it's Linux is not uh, even uh, being recognized uh, as uh, the, like, the USB flash drive is not even being recognized as the bootable flash. And when I make my very own custom ISO image using Grub as a bootloader, I can actually load uh, like run the tiny call Linux even on my new laptop. So uh, let's run a couple of commands. So let's cd to the root folder. So this is the content of the root file system. And to this particular root file system, I would like to add my text editor, which now is not there, obviously, because uh, the root file system doesn't contain any third party files. It just has what it has there, just like any other Linux distribution. So this is not only specific to tiny core Linux. So whatever Linux distribution does have this, uh, root file system like any RAMFS that has some files in it, it may have a whole lot of pre installed packages, it might have the GUI, it might have like whatever. But yeah, usually people are not changing that, but it is actually possible. So let's uh, go and alter the root file system. That's another very interesting and quite intriguing topic to do. But for now, I just need to say sudo power off to get rid of, uh, to escape from here. Yeah, and it didn't even uh, break my terminal like it usually does, which is uh, sort of a good news. Okay, so let's go back to our build script. Uh, so here, uh, I do not want to install rootfs this way. So instead, the first thing I want to do, uh, I want to unpack uh, root file system. So for this sake, I do mkd and I call it root. Then I cd to the root and then I do gun zip uh, minus c to output uh, to the standard output. And since we have just uh, navigated to the root, uh, we are referencing like one level up uh, for the core pure64.gz and we pipe this, uh, the output of the gun zip uh, to another command which is cpio minus i. But if I run this this way, this is not going to work because um, within uh, the root file system, within the dev folder, uh, there is a whole lot of uh, block devices and you must be root in order to uh, extract those and if you try to run it just like this the CPIO would be thinking that you're talking about the actual file system that you have uh, the source uh, file system where you're building this stuff from like Linux Mint in my case uh, so in order to avoid that uh, we can use uh, the utility called fake root so fake root, essentially, yeah, what it does, it just fakes the root. And this is how we can use it. So I can say fake root and minus s to store the file uh, that would be uh, containing the necessary information for, uh, for, the, the, for this faked root. And uh, I want to store it uh, above, one level above. Let's call it core pure 64 dot fake root and then cpio uh, minus i as the argument so this will already uh, sort of create um, uh, so sort of extra this would extract the root file system so we can already see how this is going to work so if I just do build okay um, 
Okay, no such follow directory. Okay, this is happening because, uh, yeah, I need, uh, I just changed the route to uh, here. So I want to drop back. So here I say CZ like this and build again. Yeah, probably now this should be just fine. So, yeah, we have the root, and now if we list the root, and in particular the dev folder, we have a whole lot of devices, block devices, being uh, populating the dev folder. Well, usually this is done like uh, automatically by the kernel, like mounting the dev tamper fast. But for Tiny Core Linux, for some unknown reason, they do have this block devices as the part of the root file system. Again, like I'm not quite sure what exactly is that happening, but uh, that's that's how they have done this. And for that sake, we do need the uh, fake root uh, trick to uh, make it possible to uh, particularly extract these uh sort of um, files properly okay now it's time uh to install our text editor so you can say vichy build so just right after unpacking stuff want to say install text editor and all i need to do since this text editor is a single static binary executable i can say cp and Vichy source uh, Vichy binary executable to user bin Vichy. Now, just a few words about the static binary executable. So, the difference between the static and uh, static uh, means statically linked. So, the difference between the statically and dynamically linked binary executables is that that with statically linked binary executables, you don't care about uh, dependencies in terms of shared libraries. So this means that your single binary executable, executable does not rely on any kind of uh, shared library. If uh, you use some application that does in particular rely on the shared library, like the so file, uh, like dot so file, in that case, um, you cannot just simply uh, bring uh, the executable into the file system and that's it. So in that case, you will need to resolve the dependencies. And the technical Linux in particular actually does that. It has uh, quite, a, uh, quite a pretty, um, quite a pretty um, package manager that uh, resolves the dependencies, uh, fetches, like downloads them from the uh, repo, and then uh, they start uh, in the TCZ format, uh, which essentially is, is the squash file system. So then it just mounts that squash file system and installs. By saying install, I mean like just copying the files to use a bin uh, and to use a lib, uh, whatever is available in the package, and also does the same for the dependencies. But yeah, that's a totally different story. This is already the domain of the tiny core Linux, but we are trying to uh, keep. Uh, this video like uh, Linux distribution agnostic and for that sake uh, again so I just do the example with a single uh, statically linked binary executable so hopefully this makes sense now once we've done this uh, well we, we can actually still uh, run this uh, intermediate step so just uh, let's just build one more time I just want to show you uh, where in particular uh, in the root, uh, root user and bin, and I can already see this, but just to give you an idea, let's say grab Vichy, and we see that Vichy is in particular now being available under the user bin uh, within the modified root file system. Okay, so now, um, Let's do the following thing. So now we want to pack our file system, our root file system back. So I want to say pack rootfs. And I can say find all and then pipe that to, again, we're using the fake root. Uh, and the file 
uh, now this time we use minus e uh, minus i uh, because we're not saving we're just retrieving the file and the file is core view 64 dot fake root so that we could provide exactly the same uh, root file system in terms of having the block devices within under the dev uh, folder like we had before because otherwise this is not simply going to work and then cpio minus o minus h u c and finally pipe this to gzip and now we want to resurrect the output to iso boot and now we call this core mod 64.gz. Uh, now, uh, once we have changed uh, the name, well, we can still uh, we can still run it. I uh, just want to give you an idea. So now it's just uh, so select the number of blocks when we have just um, uh, extracted is. 37966 and when we added one executable it just starts containing more blocks but what I actually want to show you is uh, ls iso boot now it has comma64.gz instead of uh, core pure so we also need to alter our grab configuration file so vichy build and here I want to say core mod 64 right quit so uh yeah and if i did everything properly it actually should now um create an iso image with uh the updated uh in a ramifest so let's have a look if that is the case so if this works uh then I should be able to run my text editor Vichy under this newly uh, sort of a patched uh, version of the Tinycore Linux system. And once it's done, uh, I will then show you how to burn this ISO to the USB stick and we'll run this on the real hardware. Okay, so let's try to call Vichy, and yes, cool. So I have my text editor actually working. So yeah, that's the beauty of the static link binary executables that you can <laughs> hook them in such an easy way. So um, let's uh, open the uh, file under the user bin and the file is called TCU load, which is the uh, package manager, basically. So yeah, we can also read those files already exist there. So let's create a file called burn.shell and bin bash. And I can simply say sudo dd and the input file equals to linux.iso and the output file is equal to, in my case, this is dev uh, sda. I'm not specifying sda1 or 2, just sda because uh, I don't want the iso to reside in the petition, but instead just uh, being written straightly to like, start from the very first byte of, of the USB flash drive and I also want to sync like this so let's make it executable and burn shell yeah, and one last but not least thing just before I forgot so split shape build um, just add this shape and here as well so bin bash Okay, 
right quit so let's build one more time and now here i have the usb flash drive so no plug it in and if i do sudo uh, f disk minus l um this is my uh just like the f sd one two three four well i i don't care about this so just write to the f sd this is fairly enough to sort of make it work okay so i just do burn shelf takes a bit of time and now when it's done we can finally test our custom linux distribution on a real hardware so i'm starting my laptop and uh pressing f12 to enter the boot menu so this laptop only supports uefi um but again this would also work with the legacy bios boot as I mentioned earlier, so this is my USB, uh, HD generic USB storage, and I just say enter here, and we have the grab menu, just like we did in uh, the emulator. Now it boots exactly the same stuff here, and it's quite fast, so already uh, within the uh, shell. So Vichy is the text editor, that we've added to the inner ramfs so see like i can do some text editing here so for instance i can do uh user being dc load so tc load is a nice uh thing to uh load the modules for tiny core linux uh and i can probably show you how this can be used actually yeah so it's really nice. So just a bare bone Linux, uh, no graphics, no GUI, no X server, but it looks quite neat, isn't it? So yeah, guys, this is how you can alter the existing in a RAMFS and add some your very own binaries, like static binary in my case. So yeah, having this fantastic text editor is a really, really cool thing to have. This is it from my side, guys. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. So thanks for watching. See you later and cheers.